Brothers and sisters, Brother John, watchman for that great day, which could be very, very close. Hallelujah. It's not even a question anymore. We know that we are in the season. This is the season. If you don't know right now that this is the time, that this is the season that we are in, then you are not awake. You are deep asleep, even asleep in the light. And brothers and sisters, for the most part, if you're watching my video, you know that we are so evidently close. I mean, any moment of any day, of any day, of any hour, of any moment, just moments, who knows, right? But I have to bring to you a thought about second Passover that I just realized by the Holy Spirit. It's amazing. Here we go. I'm going to, I'm going to deliver this message to you. It's a short message. Uh, I won't be too long because I got to get run in here, but um, here it is. It's in Numbers 9, verse 7, and of course through 11, it talks about second Passover. But here we go. And those men said unto him, this is those coming to uh, Moses, uh, we are defiled by the dead body of a man. We're defiled by the dead body of a man. Think of that. The lovers, the, the ones that were very close to our Lord Jesus Christ, on the eve of Passover, as he was dying from, from the, the, uh, the sixth hour to the ninth hour on the cross, where it was dark for three hours, they had to remove Christ Jesus, his body, which was dead, Okay, you get it right away, right? His body was dead. So those people that were taking the Christ's body off the cross and then going to put him in the tomb and, and, and do that, they had to get home before sundown to observe Passover, which was that evening of the Nisan 14 turned to Nisan 15, which is the, the, where they start their, their Passover. All right? Um. So the Passover was actually celebrated on the 15th of Nisan, but Jesus died uh, preceding that evening. All right? So the people that loved Jesus, that would celebrate and keep the Passover, even though Jesus was that Passover, needed to get home before dark to celebrate the Passover. You get it? So when you read this, you can say, hmm... The men that touched a dead body, which was Christ Jesus, those men said unto him, We are defiled. See, they were looking at it in the in the sense in, in numbers, okay, back then, as they were defiled because maybe they had a, a funeral or something and, and you know the loved one had died or whatever. Well, our loved one, our Lord Christ Jesus died the eve before Passover as it came towards that evening, and we are defiled, all right? Those that touch the dead body of Christ, right? This is important, brothers and sisters. It's exciting. And it gives evidence of a second Passover catching away. It's exciting. I'm excited. We're going to go to Isaiah in a minute. 20, Isaiah 24, let's see. 24, no. Now Isaiah 26, but hang out with me for a second. <laughs> Woo! All right. Let me let me read it. So we are defiled by a dead by uh, by the dead body of a man. Wherefore we are kept back. Do you see that? We're kept back from celebrating uh, Passover, so that we may not offer an offering to the Lord uh, in His appointed season at Passover, among. The children of Israel, so they couldn't uh, celebrate or observe Passover because they had touched a dead body. And Moses said unto them, "Stand still, and I will I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you." So, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, "Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, now now this is a transfer point." back then until to what I'm saying uh, representing what Christ how how we uh, representatively 
the believers in Christ took his body down off the cross. That was a dead body. And so to observe Passover, which they still weren't quite realizing that Jesus fulfilled it, okay? But he is the lamb, you see? He is that once and for all sacrifice. So speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, and that's important, dead body, uh, or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. And then here we go. The 14th day of the second month, which, brothers and sisters, as our uh, sister, um, uh, gosh, <laughs> Elijah, <laughs> Sister Kim Ballard of Elijah Moses' channel revealed so much between the 14th day of May, which is the 20th day uh, of Iyar, which is that day the cloud lifted and the children of Israel went in and moved across the Jordan into the whole, into the promised land. So what's interesting is uh, just a week before the 14th, which is a seven day event, we have the 8th of May, which would be uh, this Friday. So Friday, you have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's a seven day event for my brother Donnie Donnelly out there that um, just had the vision of the seven days, okay? A seven day event. This is what a brother that we, is our brother in the Lord and he confers with me and we talk. Uh, a seven day event. There it is. It's second Passover, from second Passover to the 14th day of May, which happens to be the day that the global pact is going to be signed, and, and uh, there's so much, okay? But let me stay with, the, with my thought, because I'm going to, I'll lose everybody. So the 14th day of the second month, uh, at eve, they shall keep it, and eat, eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, and they shall leave none of it. And until the morning, get it? None of it. It's all gone. Everything is gone, having to do with the lamb, right? Not break any bone of it according to all the ordinances of Passover. They shall keep it. All right. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 26. Let's just do a... Let me hold on a second, brothers and sisters. <laughs> You're going to love this message. This is a message of love. Isaiah 26. All right, bear with me. Let me bring it up because it's easier for me to read. Now, come on. How do you spell Isaiah? Hey. I S A I A H. There you go. Isaiah 26. All right, now we got it. All right, Isaiah 26 and verse, thinking about the dead body, 19. I'll give you time if you want to search it out. Thy dead men shall live. Think of this. That's the rapture. The dead men shall live together with what? My dead body. Do you get that? Because they had touched the dead body. That's why the reason for second Passover to observe it because they had touched the dead body and they were found unclean to observe normal Passover, which was when Christ died on that eve of Passover. Okay? So what these people were not able to do at the time of them receiving Christ off the cross and going to bury was observe first Passover. So what Passover did they observe in those days? A month later, which is the one coming the Passover that they observed was second Passover because they had touched a dead body. Wow! Woohoo! And and the dead body was Christ. And when we read in Isaiah 26, 19 through 21, brothers and sisters, thy dead men shall live. What is that? What is it that the dead men are going to live? Dead, the dead in Christ. We could go to uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 and read it. We're going to go. I'm going to go in my Bible. I'm going to read it. I got to read it. <laughs> First Thessalonians 
Here we go. We're going to read it. Bear with me. i got to read it in, the, in my Bible. And I'll look at it later. But look at this. Second, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel, and with a trump of God, and the dead, what, what, what? The dead, the dead, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Thy dead men, there you go in Isaiah 26, 19, thy dead men shall live. What does it say? Thy dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain will be caught up. Thy dead men shall live together with what? My dead body. Get it? The body of Christ. We are, we are basically... We are part of the dead body of Christ. You get it? But the but Christ is not dead. Christ our our Lord is risen and he sits at the right hand of God and he's coming to raise thy dead men, which will live, and then we which are alive will be caught up together to be with him in the heavens, and he says, They shall arise. He says, Together with my dead body, they shall arise. My dead body? <laughs> That even goes back to the day of the first fruits when Jesus died, was in the in the ground, in the earth, in the belly of the earth for three days. What happens? That when that the first fruits, when he was the first fruits of the risen dead, and many were seen. Five hundred people uh, saw uh, this, these saints come out of the graves and go into the city. Brothers and sisters, thy dead men shall live, that is the rapture, together with my dead body, the next part, which is the living, shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. That's casting out is the same as being caught up. We're going home, brothers and sisters. Woo! It's exciting. Come, my people, listen to this. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut the doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment. A little moment? Yes, a little moment. Until the indignation be overpassed. There are some people that look at this verse. My sister from Arkansas looks at this verse. I love you, Sister Terry. My sister from Arkansas looks at this verse and says, Hmm, come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers. Isn't that what the world is doing right now? They're entering into their chambers because the God of this world is telling them to enter into their undergrounds, into their rocks, their dens, their holes in the mountains to... Uh, hide themselves from the indignation of the one that sits on the throne of heaven who is coming to gather us together in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, maybe, possibly, very likely so, on second Passover, brothers and sisters. This is exciting. Yes, it might pass. We might go past this. It might not happen. But the likeliness of it happening with all that's going on in the world right now is amazing. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to not necessarily even that very moment of time that the Passover, what you know, 24-hour period of time or whatever. No, but we're closing in on something. We know we're very close. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, for the for thy dew is as the dew of the herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. The dead shall be caught up. The living shall be caught up. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers. That's not us. Our chambers are there. Their chambers are there. Get it? The people that are going into their chambers are the holes in the rocks and the dens. That's, the, that's Revelation chapter 6, verse uh, uh, 15. And um, come, my people, can be both sets of people, the ones that are going to follow Satan, and also the ones that are going to be called up to go up, as, as the word before uh, verse 20 says, all right, in verse 19, all right? Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body. Brothers and sisters, Christ's body was dead, 
we are part of his dead body, but his body is living and flourishing on the earth, and we're about to be caught up into the heavens. And what do we see in Revelation chapter 5? We see a lamb as it had been slain, right? The root of the, the lion of Judah, okay? <laughs> this is, all right? Shut the doors about thee, hide thyself as it were for a little moment, right? That little season where it says in, in the fifth seal where, where God uh, gives the uh, chapter five, uh, chapter six, he says, chapter six, we're talking about the fifth seal, chapter six, um, uh, nine through 11, get it? Nine, 11, and you can go to numbers nine through 11, okay? It's all about the second Passover. And, and hide yourself, or, you know, as a little moment. What is he doing in, in, in the fifth seal? He's giving white robes and telling us to rest yet for a little season till your fellows have been slain as you were. And it says right here, hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation passes over. The next thing that happens is the sixth seal. That's the indignation. That is the wrath of the Lamb that is coming. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place in heaven. <laughs> it's the Lord cometh out of his place to what? To punish the inhabitants of the earth. Hide us from him that sits on the throne in the wrath of who? The wrath of the Lamb. Okay? We're dealing with Passover. We're dealing with the thought of you must eat the whole thing. Second Passover without leaving anything by the, you know, by the morning. Okay. Uh, to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. What does that mean? The earth is going to crack open like a nut. All right, it's going to break like a like like an eggshell. It's going to crack. It's going to reveal the ruddy lit inner part of the earth as as this earth cracks open and every mountain and every island shall move out of its place. This is all on the verge of happening, brothers and sisters. This is the coming day of the Lord. We're not wanting the day of the Lord. For Christ said, He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to everlasting life. These are the days right now. Today is the day you need salvation. Here is the message. A, B, and C. A, accept that you are a sinner. This is what all brothers and sisters have done. Anybody that I can call my brother or sister in Christ has done this. If you're not saved today, if you don't know what it is to be born again, and you don't know how close we really are to the things going on in this world and to the things that are coming that you have no idea, and in fact, most of us have no idea how bad it's going to be in the tribulation. It's going to be beyond anything anyone has ever seen. That's how bad it's going to be. There is, you can... Add all the things that have happened in history all together, and it would be worse than that. We're talking about Noah's flood, Hitler, all the different things, okay? It's time. So the plea is, A, accept that you are a sinner. B, believe that, that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead on the third day. He died for you, right? Jesus Christ died on the cross for you, rose on the third day, that dead body that the men of God of that loved the Lord Jesus had touched could not celebrate uh, Passover. They could not. They couldn't observe it. They had touched a dead body. Therefore, this coming Passover, second Passover, happens to be the 7th of May, starting at the eve at the sundown to the end of the eve on the 8th. That is second Passover, brothers and sisters. Could it be that the rapture is going to happen? It looks very amazingly possible. 
We're all pointing to that day. We don't know what day or hour, but the likelihood of it happening any moment of any day now is amazing, without question. We know we're in the season. So see all those, the A is accept that you're a sinner, the B is believe on Jesus Christ, and the C is call on his name and you will be saved. That's the message, the simple message of the gospel. It's not religion, it's a relationship. So brothers and sisters, I'm going to blow this so far. For those of you who know, take your earbuds out because it could be loud. and sisters <laughs> read those verses and look at it and tell me read Isaiah 26 19 through 21 and read first read numbers uh, numbers 9 11 through or 6 through 11 okay and you'll be blessed God bless you brother John watchman for that great day looking forward to meeting all of you in the heavenlies with our Lord Jesus at any moment now but be ready, no matter what. Keep looking up. We're in the season. Brother John, watchman for that great day, celebrating life in our Lord. Amen. See you soon. God bless.